so hi there everybody we're now on our next video in the introduction to statistics now we're going to talk about the types of variables in statistics again my source here is a handout is from a handout by dr sweet rose Linares. so we have two main types of variables okay the first is we have the qualitative or qualitative or categorical variables um but the us the common thing or the common name is the usual um, name that we're using is qualitative variables. So this qualitative variables attributes are in terms in categories or levels. Again, the attributes are in terms of categories or levels. Okay, so the descriptions that you give a variable that help to explain how variables should be measured, okay, manipulated and or controlled. Okay, so that's qualitative variable, qualitative or categorical variables. So to give an example of such, we have, for example, sex okay, as a noun. Okay, sex as a noun. So we, we have, we, these are in terms of categories. We have either male or female. And furthermore, we have, this can be dichotomous, meaning there are two choices. Anyways, if it is, if it has three choices, it's called trichotomous. If it's more than three, we call that multinomous. Anyways, um, this is in categories. So that's sex, male or female. Another example, we have religious affiliation. So we have another types of categories. So we have Roman Catholic, INC, Islam, Baptist, a lot, even a lot more. So that's that's another type of qualitative variables. We also have lending or importance rather, importance of university, of having your education in a, in a, in a, in a university to landing a good job. Okay, importance of university to landing a good job. So this is now in terms of levels, okay? Um, for instance, we have strongly agree, agree, um, neither agree nor disagree. We have disagree and then strongly disagree, okay? So we have some important notes about this um, qualit qualitative or categorical data. So again, it's in terms of categories or levels. So important notes, um, we can differentiate categories from from levels or rather we can have this categories versus levels by this categories does not have or possess an, in an intrinsic order so that is they are all considered equal okay they are all equal in a sense okay okay so for instance male and female they're they're equal in a sense um, religious affiliation they're all equal okay they're considered equal so there is no order of who's better or who is not enough not that good levels in the other hand on the other hand possess intrinsic order from one category okay category to the next so again um, we have strongly agree is um, higher sort of from agree and strongly disagree is lower than disagree okay so levels possess that order while categories don't have that order also categories and levels must be okay so take note that they must cover okay these types or this um, characteristics first is they must be exhaustive both categories and levels they must be exhaustive what do you mean when we say exhaustive um, they should cover all possible answers okay? they should cover all possible answers um, oftentimes in in surveys in, in questionnaires the use of others please specify and the like serves the purpose of including all possibilities especially those categories with small frequencies okay so with with um, those things or categories that you that you often forget forgot because the frequency is very small this will prevent respondents from being confused about what to answer or what to tick with a check or mark x with um, since his or desired response is not among the given options so make sure that the the categories and levels are exhaustive so for example in the religious affiliation so i know that there's a lot of mo there's a lot more religious affiliation so i put there etc so meaning you you, you can specify in, in an actual um in an actual questionnaire you should write there others please specify and then blank and then put put um the respondents can answer what whatever their res religious affiliation is okay secondly um they must be categories and levels must be mutually exclusive so what do we mean by mutually exclusive they should or uh, make sure 
that the categories do not overlap. That's the word, overlap, in order to ensure that the respondents provide only one specific answer. Okay, this will prevent the respondents from being confused as to which category to put a check with, to tick, or to put an X, if there is more than one possible answer. So this holds true even for multiple response questions. So make sure that, that the categories do not overlap and then um, um, that's it. Uh, they should ensure that the respondents is clear to what to answer, not to give um, confusions about their responses. Okay, so that's that's the important part about, or the, what they call that, the reminders, shall we say, in the categorical or qualitative kind of variables. Secondly, we have this, what we call the quantitative. Okay, the opposite of qualitative is quantitative. Okay, or some books call it numerical variables. So these attributes are in terms of counts or measures. Again, it's in terms of counts or measures okay so the variable has numeric properties which are the values by which the said variables can be measured manipulated and or controlled and we have types of quantitative variables or distinctions of quantitative or numerical variables so we have two we have discrete variables and we have continuous variables and we'll talk about them one by one First, let's have the discrete variable. So quantitative discrete, if you want the full name of it, so it's quantitative and then it's discrete, it uses the process of counting. That's why quantitative variables are in, are in measures of counts or measures. So when we talk about counts, this is it, discrete variables. Okay, we count in order for us to generate data. Also, it is in terms, technically, it is in terms of whole numbers only, meaning no decimals, no fractions, okay? Since we are counting, so, you know, we count starting with one, okay? We don't count with one half, right? Or a half. So that's only whole numbers. Okay, so to give some examples, so we have, say, the number of t-shirts, okay? So we cannot have a, a half t-shirt, right? Um, the number of books owned number of novels owned okay the number of children number of heads in the family things like that so the the things that you that you count those variables are discrete and they're, yeah they're quantitative numerical and they're discrete because you're counting them secondly um, again we have the continuous variable now this variable from the word itself continuous again quantitative variable quantitative variables are in terms of counts and measures so this is the one where we use the process of measuring to generate data. Usually, um, we use the unit of some unit of measure to indicate um, that whatever we are measuring, because you know when we're measuring, um, the unit is very much important. You know, it's kind of confusing when you just say, for example, three, three what? Okay, three inches or three centimeters or three meters. They they have different meanings, right? So the unit of measure is pretty much important here. Also, it may have, this time, it may have fractional or decimal parts. Okay, so 2.5 is accepted, um, 3.72 is accepted, and such. Okay, so that's it for the continuous variable. So some examples are here. Number one is weight of a package. So weight, um, for example, 30 kilograms, that's a weight of a package. 32.7 kilograms, that's also a weight of a package. Take note, we have we can have decimal parts, we can have the unit of measure. And we only know, the, only know that by measuring, not by counting. Volume of water, 1 liter, 2 liters, okay, 2.5 liters, temperature. Okay, so those are the things in the quantitative continuous variables. Okay, so um, just take note again, just to highlight that the unit of measure um, must be must be put. Okay, the result may have a different value depending on the unit. So please take note of that. Um, in contrast with the discrete, the value of a number remains the same regardless of the variable. For example, when you say five chairs and five students, the number is still five, right? The value is five for same. Okay, or rather it's the same for the both. But when you say again, like I said, like I say three, three what? Okay, it, uh, three inches is different from three meters, which is different also from three centimeters. So 
better to make sure that the unit of measure is there okay yeah so that's it for this video um thank you very much um this video again talks about the types of variables again just a just a um recall we have two main types of variables we have qualitative and quantitative um, qualitative is categorical or in terms of categories only quantitative is when in terms of numbers specifically by counting and measuring and when we count we call them discrete when we measure we call that continuous okay so that's it for this video thank you very much i hope you learned something today and hope to see you soon in the next okay thank you